Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another edition of the Davon Lewis Show. I am covering Friday Night SmackDown this following evening, as it had just transpired this following evening. It was a decent show from start to finish. Had so many great takes of the storyline that's building up towards Money in the Bank, as well as we had some you know, we never thought we would initially see. We ended up having a bloodline ceremony of an acknowledgement, and things broke down to a pandemonium when we had towards the ending of things that we initially thought was going to happen. But Solo initially took the reins as initially taking it by force and initially showing his uh, dominance when it comes to initially the Bloodline 2.0, when it comes to the right-hand man as well as being in Tama Tonga, the enforcer of the werewolf, Jacob Fatu, and as well as Tonga Loa. Things initially were something that we never seen a prison digit of seeing Paul Heyman initially taking a bump. It's something that we initially haven't thought we would see, but he initially took a spot tonight, which was something different. And I really enjoyed it for the most part, seeing him, he come from that extreme background and seeing him initially get into that spot of that lovely um, shield spot that we initially have seen so many times. But it was great to see Paul Heyman initially being involved into the build up of Roman Reigns initially return, as well as where does Roman Reigns fit in all this whole situation? How is he feeling after initially Solo Sokola initially says he initially is the new tribal chief and so much more. Tonight's card was pretty decent from start to finish. We had a decent card. We had um, Jay Cargill taking on Tiffany Stratton and Candice LeRae in a uh, triple threat match for women's qualifying match for the women's Money in the Bank. We also had Logan Paul, Santos Esquire, and LA Knight in a qualifying. We also had Naomi, Blair Davenport, and Indy Hartwell in a qualifying for um, a triple threat yet yeah, match for the initial Money in the Bank. But let's go ahead and get into the initial card of everything in this had transpired. Things were looking good when it came to everything in this sea had um, happened tonight as it was a Madison Square Garden, one of the most beautiful um, arenas you can come to when it comes to the WWE. And it essentially is the birthplace of world wrestling entertainment. Also tonight uh, was the end of an era when it came to a notable staff member of world wrestling entertainment. Of Kayla Braxton had officially announced her last official show as being a backstage commentator. And we wish her best in our future endeavors. Things started off with when it came to the kickoff with um, the bloodline initially coming out. Um, they initially arrived in a, um, a lovely SUVs. Paul Heyman was already waiting for them and initially were making their way initially to the um, ringside. Initially coming through Gorilla, making their way directly to the ring. And then initially things initially broke out before they even got halfway through the ring. The screen panned to the screen and we had Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens initially arriving as well. And they were running full speed. It looked like they were probably behind the bloodline. And initially, they made their way directly towards um, the arena. And they ended up brawling with them as things initially took a twist and turns. And uh, Melia and, of course, staff got out of all security. Initially broke things out. But initially, we see the initial written on the wall leading up to Money in the Bank with that six-man tag. And I look forward to seeing how things initially continue to um, progress each and every single week. Speaking of when it comes to the bloodline, the bloodline has been doing a phenomenal job of, with the new 2.0 version of the bloodline. I've been enjoying everything that initially they have been doing and how they have been assorting themselves. And it's been a great feat of seeing them all involved and pushing themselves when it comes to Tama Toga, Tama Tonga Loa, the werewolf, Jacob Fatu, who is truly looking like a true enforcer. And then as well as no other than Solo Sokoa, who has been doing his thing. But also when it comes to their opposite of Cody Rhodes, who has been having a decent run, as initially he's almost heading towards two months as being the WWE Undisputed Champion, as well as Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, which Randy Orton continues to look like he's beefing up even bigger, around like 295, almost close to 300, but he's looking beefy as, as ever. But when it comes to this whole initial beef, I know it's going to be great for television. And I look forward to continue to see how things continue to progress each and every single week when it comes to the bloodline. 
Then we had initial commercial break, and Nick all this is initially um, trying to calm things down between Rhodes, Owens, and Orton. To seemingly no avail, he tried the best he could, but direct his guard to enter the ring. But then he takes out takes an RKO from the Viper, which is leading towards things that look kind of interesting, leading to the rest of security to rush in and only to find themselves, let's see, in a brawl with the trio. And initially, everything initially, they cleared the ring when it came to the baby faces. Things continue to progress um, as Nick Aldis storms, storms the ramp to the back after he saw the security got initially arcado. And things continue to progress. Um, and crossroads, as all this initially looked on, as another security officer got crossroads. Then we initially come back from things initially coming down to the next following segment. Things were looking red hot when it came to everything tonight. And I enjoyed everything that initially would continue to progress. As the crowd was chanting for the trio and things initially continued to go down. As the, they ran down the bloodline line, they promised that it was going to be good money in the bank. And Rhodes said that the bloodline line sees three victims. But the champs doesn't see but well, the champ doesn't see it as that way as such. And of course, he's responsible for Cody standing there. And, of course, the Legend Killer and Randy Orton and um, initially popped the crowd. That was to a sold-out Madison Square Garden. Instead of fighting, they wanted a war. And initially, um, he finished things when it came to the bloodline at WrestleMania. All this, initially, Nick Aldis returns to ringside with the New York Finest. As Rhodes tells Solo that he doesn't um, know why they're calling themselves the bloodline. And he doesn't see a boss. And of course, the tribal chief initially is no longer to be found. And he sees a seat filler when it comes to the situation. Of course, New York, New York City Police Department escorted them out directly out the initially out the ring. And things initially were calmed down from there from that initial situation. Then we finally get commentary on, underway as the upcoming qualifying matches for the Money in Bank, and they go over those initial situations and run down the card as initially they're getting ready to prepare for it next following Saturday. Leading up for tomorrow will initially be Money in the Bank um, seven days away. And things were looking really good when it comes to the initial card of everybody being involved, both in the men's and women's um, initial Money in the Bank. Then, of course, we get a view of a lovely ad situation of things for New York City and all their contribution when it comes to be and all their great D work and everything like that. And, of course, then we came into a spot back to a segment of showing New York and NYPD escorting Randy Orton, Cody and M to the parking lot. And Oz declines to, to comment about the trio getting in the vehicle to leave the initial arena. And then we go with like, ringside. Stevie Stride makes her way directly to the ring for the opening match of a triple um, triple threat match as she got ready for Candice LeRae and as well as Jay Cargill. This match was a lot of back and forth. It was okay for the was. It wasn't too mad. I enjoyed all the hot spots. Jay bounced back initially now initially from her initial botch from the last tag team match that she had a couple weeks back. But she was on a great page when it came to everything that initially happened. Of course, um, they had a couple of commercial breaks in between when it came to everything that she had transpired. But the initial ending came down to Tiffany Stratton initially picking up the victory after things broke down when it came to her getting the prettiest moonsault and scoring the pinfall for the initial victory after Nia Jax was there. Of course, got involved and of course, she congratulated her and all the whole entire nine yards. And things continue to be progress with the storyline of all these ladies being involved when it comes to initial getting a WWE women's um championship match for the women's championship but things continue to progress as tiffany stratton looked like she's the number one favorite to end up winning the money in the bank then we cut to a backstage where naomi warms up for a match until bailey stops sells by to says hi and dress the possibility of naomi winning the money in the bank and of course go through their whole entire talk and hug and go from there and then, of course, Blair Davenport interrupts and then runs both women down before escaping as they were looking initially to get um, their initial revenge from there, but it panned to a commercial break. Then things got underway as we cut to another initial backstage segment 
of Mia Yim, Mi Chen, with Nick Aldis about a match against Nia Jax before the Street Pops addressed the match of their own to no avail when it came to the SmackDown GM. Um, Pretty Daily initially arrived to pitch to Aldis for a musical, which got some grief from the Prophets and initially set up for them to initially get a match against um, the Street Profits. So initially the Street Profits and Pretty Daily gonna go to war. We know these teams have great chemistry beforehand and I'm looking forward to seeing a great tag team match. Then we got ready for the initial match um, of Santos Escobar getting ready for his um, match for the night as Santos initially was prepping against Logan Paul and as well as for um, LA Knight, but all qualifiers initially members that was initially going to be involved into the triple threat match um, initially were pre prepping, getting ready for things initially broke down. Then they pan to a commercial break. And then, of course, they go to this week's announcement regarding Indianapolis receiving three major P PLEs, including Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, and a SummerSlam. Then things that she broke down when it came to cutting to the backstage with a chat of the um between Paul Heyman and Solo Sokoa. Heyman says that Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, and Kevin Owens have been escorted away initially at the arena before asking Solo where's Jacob Vatu. And Sokoa says that he hears Heyman and he's listening to him. And Heyman says Vatu was too dangerous, so he's not here tonight. But but that's why Paul Heyman is solo is Solo's wise man. And of course, that is what they are there tonight to bring things about. Then we got to the ringside where Logan Paul makes his way in for his entrance. Always great. Of course, sporting a little prime bottle and just to keeping us all involved when it comes to everything, when it comes to his um, type of style and entertainment. Then, of course, we got LA Knight and then we got Santos Escobar. And this match was a lot of back and forth in between technical wrestling. Everybody was able to get off their spots. And I give this match maybe a 3.5 out of 5. It was decent for what it was. It was very mid, but okay. It was slow pace, but it still kept me highly invested. Of course, they ended up having a couple commercial breaks and things in under the sun between hand. But things just see broke down as things look was looking good as LA Knight ended up advancing by hitting that beautiful BFT and rolling up um Logan Paul's setting up for that initial feud for the United States Championship. Of course, Logan Paul's most likely probably going to cost um, LA Knight the initial money in the bank, set up the feud for the United States Championship at SummerSlam. So I look forward to seeing how things continue to progress in a really great way. But of course, um, LA Knight now initially advances to the money bank, and I look forward to seeing the initial demands one, which is going to be great. of seeing how things continue to progress when it comes to that initial match. But initially, my hot take is so many different twists and turns could happen. Maybe Triple H has some things up his sleeve to keep us highly invested. But I see this year's either it's going to be one heel and one face being a money bank this year. Then we got Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews backstage, which we have see, finally seen them not being in ghosts. But initially, they're involved in a few when it comes to things initially with Carmelo Hayes. And so much more and different things. And they, of course, had an arguing about who will advance. And, of course, Carmelo Hayes got himself involved saying initially he will be mellow in the bank. And initially they cut away with a video package of the career of legend of Sika uh, Anawawi, which is Roman Reigns' father. And it, he had a great, notable career when it came to everything initially that he had been involved in. And so much more. And, of course, we initially saw his last appearance when he initially acknowledge Roman Reigns and gave him initially the Leia of and or the tribal chief and acknowledge him when he came to hell in a cell. Then we got things underway with the backstage of Blair of Agamemnon making our way to the ring for the initial next match. As things continue to progress, as she, um, Indy Hartwell is already ring getting a job or a little entrance. Then Naomi makes her way down as well. But of course, during that little pan, they end up having an Andrade promo, which was okay, very mid. But of course, he has his eyes set on being the money in the bank. Then we have the match underway when it comes to the women's um, qualifying. This was a lot of back and forth. I enjoyed everything when it came to these ladies. These ladies did a really great job. Blair was a standout when it came to tonight's match. Um, you got more than enough wrestling when it came to these ladies. These ladies really got enough time to really showcase their moves. 
keep each other in a kind of nice little balance and things initially was cool when it came to initially how everything broke down as naomi if you're feeling the glow she ended up becoming the new initial now women's um advancement into the money in the bank and I, i'm ex truly excited when it comes to naomi naomi has always been a true legend she's now basically getting up the ranks but i don't see her initially coming off with the victory when it comes to the women's money in the bank but of course um things that she broke down when we ended up having afterwards when all three women are back to feet. of course we ended up having jay cargo coming down and this lead by um to the ring hitson blair to the ring post and so much more and then things initially broke down from there when it came to how things made progress with jade and blair davenport then should we go to a commercial break and things get hyped up again to the road towards money in the bank with of course including things of running down next week's card including the street profits versus pretty daily jay cargill taking on um and Bianca Belair taking on Indy Hardwell and Candice Ray again. Hopefully this match becomes a lot better. As well as A-Town Down facing DIY for the WWE Tag Team Championship, which is going to be a Smash Mouth great style tag team match, which I look forward to seeing. Then, of course, speaking of DIY, they was backstage in the backstage segment. They came themselves being involved before Austin Theory injected himself, saying that he... Um, had times to think about what they were talking about on him and initially what they th what he thought and DY points out Grayson Waller has been pulling theory on in their way but Waller blindsides them to interrupts proceedings and DIY gets laid out and of course the recap for tonight's um fight between the bloodline and Owens of course gets underway then things shall initially shift when it comes to the initial segment as I look forward DIY initially maybe coming off with the goal but i'm literally i'm waiting to see where, how austin theory may pick things and when you see does make that turn on grace waller he's gonna get a really great pop and a great reaction and i look forward to seeing how he initially gets into a fold of everything but of course grace waller continue to do great work when it comes to his hill work and i look forward to seeing how he transitioned into being a single star again but we know he can do great things then we get ready for the acknowledgement of the bloodline um we had to the ringside the blind make the ring so los Colo comes out with um tonga loa and as well as um tama tonga and paul Heyman. then is she coming down but this is giving a nice vibe to this group this group is giving like a nice hillis group they're getting the booze they're getting everything and it's just, just everything is working out to the, the highest degree and then of course um Things continue to be progress as um, Paul Heyman introduces all the members of the bloodline and basically gives a nice little speech. Then Solo introduces the Simone Werewolf, his new enforcer, Jacob Fatu. He comes directly out. I'm loving the stage graphics and I'm loving this interesting. Death Rebel finally did something good when it comes to an actual theme, but I'm loving that entrance with the fire, the darkness, Give my lights a little red glow and it fit Jacob Fatu to a T and it made him like a real initial superstar. And I enjoyed every single moment of that entrance. Um, Paul Heyman initially goes into a soul spiel, but initially solo initially gets things into a serious mode as he initially wanted all members of the bloodline to step up and acknowledge him. Then, of course, he tells Tom Mataga, step up acknowledge me and of course um tama tonga acknowledges him he also asked for tama tonga loa to step up and he initially did then he called on F jacob fatu look a menacing straightforward serious and i enjoyed every moment when it comes to jacob jacob is going to be a WWE champion one day straightforward this is coming from me directly if you guys like to know from there then initially thanks for paul Heyman. Then he solo asked for Paul Heyman to assort himself and acknowledge the new tribal chief. Of course, they end up pulling out that lovely rail Leia that initially signifies as being Roman Reigns. Paul Heyman's facial expression showed it all. He was blood shot in the face of, of crying. His hair, facial hair is looking all stressed out. The whole nine yards. And things, things broke down when it came to Paul Heyman. Initially getting the mic. And initially just sucking up his pride and said, Nestle, 
you are not my tribal chief. Things initially broke down when it came to Sol Sokolo hitting that out of nowhere Samoan spike directly on Paul Heyman. Then initially, the bloodline dragged him into the center ring. He told he gave orders for his enforcer for Jacob Fatu to go to the top ropes. And Jacob Fatu delivers a beautiful diving headbutt. Then things initially broke down as they want to put more, inflict more pain when it comes to um, Paul Heyman. The, of course, things initially broke down when it came to Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. They cleared the announce table, got things all cleared away. Solo Sokolo gave orders to put him through it. And initially, of course, they did it trio style of the triple power bomb. And Jacob Fatu was the initial man to set up the initial power bomb. And in three man style, the new bloodline put put Palm Heyman to rest. Then things the fans started to chant and boo, and they were chanting for Roman in the whole nine yards. I mean, he got a it was a loud pop for Roman. And of course, um things just he broke down as they initially put the new le- put the layer of signifying the tribal chief directly on um Solo Sokoa to end the initial show and they just hit that one up so if you're a fan of the new bloodline i am too i'm enjoying everything they're initially putting on a, on a clinic and i look forward to seeing more of what the bloodline continue to dish out each and every single week um the whole entire card was great when it came to the both women's matches when it came to the triple threat as well as la knight getting that victory in the men's um money in the bank Cody Rhodes got a little bit less te- television time, but he still assorted himself and got into a brawl with the bloodline. The bloodline was looking dominant when it came to initially their presentation, their presence, and looking poised and looking great when it came to initially how things initially broke down. But I'm loving this whole entire week of things this week have really have been progressing when it comes to not only WWE, but AEW. I'm a big fan of both promotions. Both promotions have been stepping it up and really going hand in hand with everything. Same when it comes to NXT. NXT's been doing delivering great work, but I feel like this week they kind of just kind of mellowed out after all the big buzz and all the initial secret people that initially came involved and initially making their appearances. They kind of like made a cold period. Maybe they step back up next week. They got to keep that hot streak going when it comes to NXT to have in order for me to be involved. Um, other than that, um, Money in Bank look like it's going to be really great. Also, don't forget to catch my live as I will initially be, will be live this following Sunday to do a post show when it comes to AEW's Forbidden Door. I feel like it's going to be a really great show. And I want to chop it up with one of my great friends, um, Jeffrey Robinson, who's going to be coming through to show his love and support. And we're going to be chopping it up, having a good time joking having a great laugh and i will hopefully you guys will be able to come through and save that time slot to come through directly post right after forbidden door um on sunday evening but i really other while i appreciate you guys coming through show your love and support post your comments down below and don't forget to like this video and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace